our constitution, the Kunz Gazette, is becoming 70 years old. In celebration of this anniversary, uh, the Bundestag, our lower house of parliament, uh, had a celebratory session today. And um, as you would expect, every uh, party except for the AFD claimed that the constitution was indeed uh, created to protect the country against conservatives. Um, or as they call us, uh, right-wing populists. Um, you know what's interesting? Actually, the Nazis neither call themselves populists nor right-wing. That's quite an interesting fact, I, I would say. Uh, many uh, try to um, claim that the Nazis, because they call themselves uh, socialists, revolutionary, progressive, and so on, were therefore on the political left, but that's also a half-truth, so I want to just uh, sh show that discussion aside and um, for what I can say, um, speaking the language and coming up here, um, neither side is correct. The, the Nazis were neither left-wing nor right-wing and it is a bit um, superficial and dishonest if, uh, if one side tries to push that on the respective other side. Um, but it is even more <laughs> dishonest if uh, modern-day politicians try to smear their opponents as uh, Nazis and claim that the entire constitution was in fact made uh, so that the opposition may never come to power. They all agree that uh, the constitution needs uh, updating um, and I would even agree with that. I had written a little post on my uh, written blog about um, how it is already outdated. Um, it has never been up to date. So we never were granted the same freedoms that English speaking people had in Great Britain, Australia, Canada, America, and so on. Um, it was never up to date, uh, but uh, they have completely different innovations in mind that they would rather see, and it has absolutely nothing to do with freedom and rights, as you would expect. Instead, uh, um, uh, the uh, speaker of the conservative, oh, sorry, that's the wrong terminology, of the uh, party, the union, uh, that's Angela Merkel's uh, party, um, Brinkhaus, uh, said that uh, the uh, constitution lacks a notion for the, or uh, about the internet. Um, and uh, this is basically why it is outdated already. It is not even um, why, I mean, I agree here. Um, it is not just that the constitution was never really up to date. It is also that it is cluttered with stuff that is completely irrelevant for a document that is supposedly um, uh, describing how we, the people, give ourselves the laws and how we enforce the laws. Um, and that sets the limits to the state and um, notifies us when it is necessary for the people to raise up in violence against an overreaching government. That is what a constitution is, in indeed. And um, if the constitution instead <laughs> talks about everything else, like how maybe the internet, um, then it, it very quickly gets outdated because of course technologies change and so on. Uh, German politicians have a very different view on what a constitution is, or they have actually no concept for it, and I will, uh, or it's only a, a very minimal concept of it, and I will explain it in a second. Um, that would not allow them to, to actually grasp what they are talking about. Um, likewise, uh, Christian Lindner of the uh, pseudo liberal, uh, sorry, pseudo libertarian party FDP, uh, also was missing the internet on the paper that is describing the way we make our laws. This this prank, prank man guy uh, from the union uh, adds that um, the power uh, separation between the federation and the individual states must be reorganized. And I happen to agree with him. Over the last uh, decades there had been a lot of constitutional changes and by now I hardly see it as, um, as a federation at all because the, uh, the federal government has taken more and more uh, powers in its hand and overrode every local uh, ability to make laws. And the 
part that uh, I think would, you know, would really help to change things for the better to, to um, turn this ship around would be if uh, all levels of government um, had the right to collect taxes on their own. This sounds counterintuitive for a conservative, uh, but maybe I should explain that so, so that, that you can follow. Um, Maggie Thatcher, by the way, also had that same uh, thought. The more uh, lower rank um, communities or lo lower smaller regions can uh, collect taxes on their own and, and spend it for a specific purpose that people can see with their eyes, the uh, less need there is for uh, calls to higher levels of the, uh, of the government. But higher levels of, uh, of the uh, government structure usually draw bad characters that manage the money. So in the long run, uh, giving more powers to lower level governments uh, government entities uh, like your your local mayor, for example, or um, you know um, the county, whatever it's called, wherever you live, um, the more power it is for them to actually um, t collect money and uh, put it into spending, which makes their elections also much more interesting for the for the people who live there. Um, the uh, less power those on top have. Also, propaganda-wise, they have uh, uh, more difficulties to explain why they have to do something that the local authorities could actually handle. Come specific about this, um, but what I like about what he said is that he actually uh, also noticed that it needs clearer um, uh, assignments of uh, competencies of powers on the different levels. I do not believe that he actually stands by it, but I would I would really love to see a, a politician to, to sort out that mess. Katrin göring eckert of the Green Party um, asked for children's rights and uh, climate protection to be part of the constitution. Now, what bothers me, and I have noticed this, I think, five years ago, is that none of our politicians seem to grasp what a constitution is. I mean, it's really, it is not just that our elites disres disrespect uh, the concepts of democracy, like separation of power, freedom of speech, and so on and so on. Um, what I have learned over the last years is that they do not understand the meaning of the words they use. That's, uh, that is um, a mind-boggling uh, realization. But it is uh, true, they do not understand what a constitution actually does. And I have uh, thrown that in for you to remember. It is actually to draw the limits of the state so that everybody knows what the state can do and must not do, more importantly. And um, it, it outlines how the people can govern itself. It's just the core consensus of how we govern ourselves. It is not just oh important enough to um, ra ram your wish list into it so that other parties cannot uh, you know uh, contest what you want. That is not the idea of a constitution. But this is, and uh, as I go on, you will see that the, the mindset of all parties. This is what all uh, our party leaders. Believe they believe a constitution is a is a sheet of paper that everybody agrees is important and therefore uh, must be shoved um, uh, and, and 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 cluttered with their personal wishes. That is what they believe. They would not want conservatives to shove in their wish lists um, on just a high enough uh, level so that it seems less assailable um, to the larger population. That. I mean, if you wanted to, uh, let's say, um, you want define marriage as between only a man and a woman, which is what what some states in America uh, have done, and some states, uh, some count countries in East Europe also have done, um, is counterproductive. And the left should have realized at some point, okay, maybe that is not a good thing, that everybody just sees the constitution as um, 
an important enough document so that I just sneak in my my wishes. Um, it just makes it it makes it harder for us to to live with each other if we blow up the minimal consensus out of proportion. If something that is indeed divisive is put into the constitution, and as long as children's rights are not clearly defined, I mean it is not how we make our laws. Even if something is terribly important to you, like a stable family or um, or climate change, whatever is important to you, it is not the place to put that on. And uh, the same goes with these uh, human rights charters. Uh, if the left had its way, we would see uh, the human rights charters basically growing to their, um, to their party platforms. An example why our constitution is already outdated and cluttered is already given in a speech by Andrea Nahles, who is the leader of the Social Democrats. Uh, she said the demand for the equality of men and women um, that is uh, written in the uh, constitution must also be parlayed in, in real life. Um, and it is, it is so crazy. Our constitution does in fact read men and women are equal and where there are disadvantages, um, the, it is the state's responsibility to alleviate these disadvantages or to remove these disadvantages. But, you know, what is an advantage for one individual may be a disadvantage for another one. Um, the leader of the uh, Socialist Party, the one that ran the East German dictatorship, Dietmar Bartsch, um, said um, the uh, constitution is a call for a social democracy. Um, and it's also true. Um, uh, constitutional lawyers uh, will, will tell you that the German constitution says that there should not be poverty. Again, it is a very fussy uh, concept. Somebody is paying for something and of course we do have poverty, we do have people on the streets and so on, and particularly in left-wing areas like Berlin, um, homelessness is a huge thing. Uh, so it does not really what it promises to do. Um, but it also it just clutters the constitution, everybody feels um, he's entitled uh, to this and to that, and everybody's just complaining because the constitution is supposedly the thing that we all hold dear. And if, if you clutter it with all kind of wish lists, then of course everybody is uh, discontent. Um, that's what you have if you don't see a constitution as the document that limits the power of the state and tells the state how to make and enforce the law. Uh, Alice Weidel um, is um, the head of uh, the AFD, and uh, she has nothing better to complain about than uh, the lack of the German language in the constitution, and uh, the uh, ability for, or uh, the possibility to hold referenda and um, plebiscites. Um, I am in favor of uh, referenda, I don't like plebiscites, um, but uh, also just, you know, just uh, sparsely. Um, there's nothing more tiring than being asked to the ballots uh, all the time for, for stuff that you think is less important. I remember having uh, read through a lot of uh, nonsense, because I, I mean there are some areas in, in Germany um, for example, Bavaria and Berlin, where you can uh, be uh, called for uh, uh, to the ballot ballot box for all sort of uh, referenda, and it 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 usually isn't for important things. So you read through some stuff like um, you know what what an, uh, what what electricity company should be privatized or should be bought by the community, and you know. Um, really small fish stuff and you you look into the matter of this specific company and and Critnet and and all of this um, and your average citizen gets tired uh, over this after after some uh, years and um, the more 
referenda you actually hold, the more annoyed people get. Um, so I'm okay. I'm I'm okay. I'm okay with some referenda, and I agree with her that this could potentially be part of the constitution. At least she's the only um, parliamentarian that speaks of um, an addition that would actually be um, that would actually have a place in the constitution. But also she wants to include German. Um, and I had once written a text about Alice uh, Weidel uh, after she gave an interview to a uh, German comedian, Heuf uh, Umlauf is uh, his name, I think, um, or something similar. Um, and uh, what what became blatantly obvious was that she has not a real grasp of uh, dem democracy, of, of uh, the concepts. Of democracy, uh, so that was uh, yeah, you know a blind hit. She um, um, got it right. Um, uh, when it comes to the referenda, yes, that is something that can be included into the constitution. Uh, but she also is into the uh, uh, clutter, the uh, constitution with your wish list uh, business. And um, also, um, what does she actually mean with that? Because you will just end up with this discussion what belongs to German and what does not. Sooner or later, uh, more Turkish and uh, Arabic uh, words will just uh, make it into the language and then you have this entire nonsense debates about whether um, halal should be in legal texts or not and blah 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 and you ultimately don't care. You don't give a shit. And... Uh, you don't want uh, the, an, an entire dictionary as an appendix for your constitution. Neither do you want um, a grammar book. Um, the dialect that I grew up does not have a past tense. Uh, we uh, substitute the past tense with the perfect, for example. That's a huge difference. And when she says that um, she wants to include German in the constitution, I mean, what for, what specific purposes for um, and what term what term can and should be said and used in what places okay uh, so not, not only is that a, a complete sideline issue it's also that um, you would have to um, write you would have to clutter the constitution with a lot of specifics just to get that somehow implemented in a meaningful way um, two Bavarian documents, for example, have to uh, use Bavarian grammar. For example, um, the perfect in, in Bavaria can differ from the perfect in northern Germany. Uh, ich bin gestanden is Bavarian German for I, ich habe gestanden, I have stood. Um, both mean I have stood, but in northern German you have a different perfect than in southern German. So what are you doing? So that was it for today again, and I'll see you soon. Bye.